or your VE table. Uh, this basically measures airflow and essentially fuel through the engine. As you'll see, this, the numbers here graduate from obviously lower to higher numbers with the peak occurring right where the engine, your particular application, will make its peak torque. Peak torque occurs where the engine fills the cylinders and burns the mixture the most efficient of at any given RPM. So as you can see right now, these numbers here, you'll see this, the blue, blue uh, cell is in fact where the engine is operating. It's at 800 and so RPM with a load of about 59 or so on the kilopixel scale. Right now you're showing a, a corrective, your closed loop correction is active and it's on the negative side. In other words, what it's having to do is it's having to add fuel. Again, the CCM takes into consideration your engine coolant temp, intake air temp, map sensor readings, as well as other data, and figures how long to pulse the injector to achieve the desired air fuel ratio. So this number is one of the numbers in that equation. If these numbers are incorrect, the wideband O2 has the last say-so. And what it essentially does is it tells the ECM, okay, this is the formula you have. However, the formula you have is a bit off, and I'm going to correct it for you. And this is what it does. But what you want to do typically is have this needle throughout your cruising and driving and so on and so forth. You don't want large swings back one way to the other. You want to try and keep it normally under 5% either way. What that does is that will enhance drivability and overall smoothness of the running of the engine. And what you normally would do is go ahead and highlight a few boxes in the area, in the same area. You don't necessarily have to do just one box. You can click and drag and highlight all the boxes in that one desired area, or that one area in which the engine is running. Bracket, right key will increase that number. Press enter, and now you'll see the O2 come back the other way. Now it does not have to correct quite as much. Did you see that? It all came back this way here, okay? And this is, again, this table is a steady state table. What does that mean? That is steady state fueling. This table is driving down the road. This table is just idling. When the engine is at a particular RPM, a steady RPM, and a steady load. This is steady state fueling only. But virtually all of your other fueling tables, your cold start, your uh, fuel enrichment tables, your acceleration tables are all derived from this particular table. Calibrated as physically possible, again, with very little swings left to right. You typically want to keep it certainly under, under 10, either way. And normally I try and stay to the left of zero. That means that it's having to pull fuel out to achieve your desired air fuel ratio, essentially. And if it goes into default, your wideband O2 happens to fail or something of that nature, you can certainly drive home on a, on a mixture that's essentially a little bit rich, much more so than you can on a mixture that's too lean. Warm-up enrichment table is best set after the VE table has been calibrated correctly. This should be done after allowing the engine to fully cool for a cold engine start. If the startup enrichments are too lean or too rich, adjustments can be made accordingly. Once the engine is fired and running, next step you'll want to take is force timing. You want to make sure that what the computer thinks the timing is versus what it really is are in fact one and the same. So you'll go here to force timing, enter value 10, 12, 15, whatever, whatever works for you. 12 degrees, let's say, we're going to set it. Okay. Now it will hold it at 12 degrees, period, no matter what you do, whether you rev it, whether you do it, it doesn't matter, it'll hold it at 12 degrees. Grab yourself a timing light and check the timing in the engine and make sure that it is in fact 12 degrees before top dead center. That's what you set it to. Adjust the distributor accordingly. If you have to move the distributor a, a fair amount, you may want to go back and double check the phasing of your rotor to make sure that that's still intact. Once you do that, lock down the distributor. Make sure that again, it's at 12 degrees. Again, we're, we're, we've set it to, to hold it and lock it at 12 degrees. Once you're done with that operation, click force timing and it'll go back to where it was. And again, it will refer to your spark table, which is right here. There's your spark table. It's gonna hold about 20 degrees. So now that you, now you know that not only is it the computer think it's 20 degrees before top dead, top dead center, but it really is 20 degrees before top dead center. Once you set that, 
now you know that the computer and what the reality is are in fact one and the same. The computer thinks it's 20 degrees before top dead center. It is in fact 20 degrees before top dead center. So now all these values on this table will be correct. So you know where your starting point is. Again, reference points. One other thing that we want to make sure that we do as well, and when you first fire the engine, you want to look at your target idle speed. Again, in a plug and play system or a plug and play application, most of these parameters will already be set. This is where we're at. This is your IAC position here. Right here is your IAC position. That is your actual IAC position of the idle air control motor that's on the throttle body of this application. What that's telling you is open about 12%. Okay, and it's jumping around, obviously, to keep the idle steady. You don't want the IAC number to be too overly large, so that will not allow it to open far enough when you have it in gear, with the air on, when it's cold. So you want to keep this IAC number down around 10, 12, maybe anywhere from 8 to 12 is good. If the IAC number is excessive, say 20, 25, what you want to do is oh, you'll need to open the throttle blades a little bit more. When you do that, you'll see the screw and set screw on the Excel throttle body, and you'll want to turn that screw in to open the throttle blades. On the flip side, if the numbers on the IAC count are low and or not moving, we want to close the throttle blades so the IAC motor stays open farther in order to achieve and maintain the desired idle speed. After doing that, now change your TPS setting. So you'll want to come back here. This number will have changed. Store low set point, and there you go. This is your throttle follower. How quickly do you want when you let off the gas? How quickly do you want it to come, the idle to come down? You can move the whole graph, page up or page down. Press enter. Stick shift cars, typically you'll want this a little bit more abrupt, a little bit more, uh, a little less curved, a little, little more straight line this way, smoother and, and better upshifts. So now that you've done that operation, you'll want to come to the F2 VE table and make sure that you adjust this. This is steady state fueling only. This is airflow and fuel flow through the engine. Something you can go to here is a 3D graph. Now, what we've done is we've just taken that whole 16 by 16 table and we're now reviewing it in a, uh, in a graph form. 